Welcome to Unplugged with Adam C. and Cirillo. We've just been sitting here for about 15 minutes. He said, do an intro. Shane said, do an intro. And I'm like, what's what's the name? Um, yeah, so I think that's what we're going with for now. On the spot. Decision made on the spot. On the spot. Here we are. Friday, Salt Lake City, hotel room. You got the whole setup here, man. Yeah, I mean, we're basically running with a flipped over uh, table, end table here. And then uh, a Pelican case that this is all sitting on. So, you know, it's not, we are not on the Joe Rogan experience by any means. but uh, We'll get there, slowly but surely. We're making it work. Yeah, I feel like I need to find my podcast um, tone. I'm, I'm, I'm really, I think I'm good at interviews. I'm good at going into that mode and being insightful and stuff. But I feel like podcasts, you got to be a bit more, got to be a bit more relaxed. Kind of the best podcasts are just two guys having a conversation. You it's know, always. and I think... I think it might take us a few episodes to really get it down, but I know we have a lot to offer. For sure. And I think, uh, you know, we'll probably do do them at different times, but right now the goal is to do them after the races. So I think that will come in handy for outdoors since we're, you know, you get done way earlier than Supercross. We could even have them up that night, so might be some cool content. Unfocused, man. I'm unfocused. I got to focus on racing. No, you'd be okay. You'll be okay. No, I'm, I'm, I'm kidding. I'm playing the, playing the role there. Um, yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited. I, I think, you know, we've been talking about doing it a while. Obviously, your company runs my Converge Media, runs my social media. Um, and, man, I've been a part of the social media game for so long. I feel like I came up right at the perfect time. I'm like probably 12, 13, 14 when Instagram's starting to become a big deal and, I look back at my old posts now from, you know, even like five, six years ago. And I'm like, man, I was funny. Like that was in, uh, I was good at Instagram. I, and I think, you know, I've lost, I've lost the, I'm not great at social media anymore. You know, I'm no, you're, not you're good at it. You just like what I've, I'm a perfectionist. Yes. It's my yes. problem. Like that, if I can't, a problem, though. It's a good yeah, thing. but I can't post if I don't have something insightful. If I don't have something, if I don't have something to add to the space, you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's weird because I see it from a bunch of different guys, right? Like I got you, Chase, uh, you know, amateur kids, whatever, like, and everyone is different. Like the amateur kids just want like Insta bangers. Yeah. You know, that's all they care about. Totally. You want like very insightful posts. Chase is just wants to look cool. Like it's, it's, it's kind of funny how everybody is different. Um, but yeah, I mean, you're, you're good at it, dude. You're good at it. Yeah. So I think with this podcast, it's just something for me. I mean, everybody knows I, and man, just ask my family, friends, whatever. I love to talk. Like, I love to just have a conversation, um, get it out there and, and talk through things. And yeah, so I think this is a way to kind of add to my social presence in a way. And, and also just kind of um, control the narrative of what I'm, of kind of what I'm about myself, which is, which is cool. You know, I think everybody kind of paints a picture of an athlete typically just based on media and that doesn't come from your perspective. So um, I th I'm, I'm with it, man. What do you think about the media right now? Like the media landscape, like, do you feel uh, like there's, there's some heavy hitters in the media and motocross, right? Like mm. you got pulp swap, whoever. Yeah. Uh, do you feel like the media is, is solid right now in moto or like, what, what would you like to see change? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot. I have a great relationship with a lot of the media. Obviously, I've been on Steve's, you know, the Pulp MX show so many times since I was like 11 years old. Um, those guys are like family over there, basically. Um, I think one of the one of the issues with the media in our sport is the sport is so small that you, you're not trying to burn any bridges. You know, if somebody's if somebody's really blowing it, you know, I feel like maybe we don't call them out enough or you know, even, you know, even stuff with me. And I, I've told the guys in the past, I've said, you are you don't have to explain why you wrote, uh, I did shitty last weekend. I, I did shitty last weekend. That's fine. <laughs> like, it, I'm not mad. You know, I, I, I always try to give them, you know, give them the... Um, yeah, they, they got to do their job still. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, and, that's, and that's, where the, that's where the sport is right now. It's like nobody really wants to ask tough questions. Um that is true. You know, it yeah. just, that's just how it is. And I don't know, I can't, I can't say I'd want it to be like the NBA or the NFL because, man, it gets so gnarly sometimes. I think it's like a bit unethical. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I think we could do a little better job with just telling it maybe how it is. Um, I feel like we're, 
we're kind of worried about our relationships in the sport because everybody knows everybody. It's just so small. And that's, like you said, I think that bites it in the ass sometimes. Yeah, and that's why I try to, you know, I was taught, man, I, I think my dad, my dad made me read um, How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie when I was like eight years old. <laughs> and I was, you know, kind of learned early that you can take any question and you can take it wherever you want. And that's why I try to do um interviews press conference whatever i just i I have something to say already on my mind and then i get there uh sometimes i don't answer the question though i could i could do better yes you're good at dancing around it yeah i am i've I've seen it before when i interviewed you so really i know how it is yeah yeah Yeah, and i i say i've been saying (laughs) um too much lately the transition (laughs) words like that i've really been trying to to cut that out because i gotta get my commentator voice on man that that's my one of my goals moving forward is to kind of go into that space. So you're going to be good at it. Yeah, this is good practice for me. And yeah. if we can have, if we have a few guys listen to this, that'd be awesome. I think we can probably get like maybe five to ten listeners. I'm c- I'm good with that. I'm yeah. good with that as long as we're contributing something. Yeah, it's a solid start. Um, so big season this year as far as like they're connecting motocross and supercross, all that jazz. Uh, you got you know world supercross on the other side. You got Kenny going to do that. You got everybody here. You got Eli out. Like, where do you see the state of the sport right now? You know, you've been in it a while now. Yeah. Where, where, where are we at right now? I think change is hard. You know, when I when I first heard everything was kind of kind of combined, and then we had the playoffs and stuff. You kind of at first you're like, no, like don't touch my baby. You know, this is my sport. This is how it's always been. Please leave it alone. Um, but I think everything has to evolve and. The fact that the TV package is consistent, um, and, and really that's that was the big thing with combining the series is is the TV deal, right? I mean, um, I think everybody everybody kind of gets that, and I think the playoffs are cool. If that could catch on to more of a, you know, it's got a little bit more mainstream appeal, even though I don't think this this sport could ever be mainstream. I don't know if I'd even want it to be. Yeah, but I'm, what do you I'm think? You. you think I don't, it could ever? Know. Dude, I I've talked to some people that are into like you know just average skateboarders or whatever. And they're like, yeah, you know, like we got to keep it core. Like we don't want it to be big. Yeah. And they hate on people like Ryan Sheckler or even Rob Deerdeck who have been extremely successful. And I'm like, dude, like that put skateboarding like on a way bigger platform. And I, and similar to like Travis Pastrana for us, right? Like I don't think like Nitro Circus and all that stuff was massive for motocross and supercross, whether Travis was involved in it or not. And I, I don't know, like things like that, were on the main stage, and it still didn't put Supercross necessarily on the main stage, right? Like, I don't know. Like, how do you feel about it? I mean, I wouldn't be mad because it would bring a lot more just funding to the sport, you know, when, you know, shout out my guy Joey Savacci. Like, it's you have somebody, I, I think of him right off the bat just because of, like, kind of our interactions and kind of being in the same space the last couple of years. Like, you think of somebody with that much talent that doesn't, that can't just fly to the races and get on his motorcycle and ride. You know, that's um, that's an issue. I mean, that's an issue. That guy, and, and, you know, there's similar stories out there. A lot of, you know, they, I have a weird relationship with the word deserved because I think it's just kind of a made up, I don't think it really exists, but if we're going to use it, we would use it there, you know. Um, but going back, going back to the question, I think, I think it's good in the long run. I think, the, the TV package in itself, just that alone, I'm I'm good with. Playoffs are cool. LA Coliseum, I'm into it. What do, what do we have to do to get to that next level? What do we have to do? Like, like I, do I wish I wish I knew. Um, you know, I think because look, like you look at like people like JGR going away. Like people have said this in the past. Like if JGR can't get you know, can't keep these companies around or whatever. Like they have connections to massive companies. What are we doing wrong? Like, I don't, I don't think there is a specific answer for it, but I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know either, man. And it's, it's kind of, I feel like we've been in the same place for a while now with social media. It's like, this is just an example, but we all do like the Sunday recaps talking about P whatever. And, um, you know, we're going to go back to work this week and stuff. And <laughs> as much as we clown on it, I mean, what else is there to really say? I think, I think that's, um, I think that's kind of Feld's, I think that's kind of Feld's department. I don't know how we can get more creative. Obviously I'm just focused on trying to keep up with these guys, but um, I think it's definitely, 
I feel like the sport's bigger than ever, and I, I think I think that's hard because nostalgia always kind of wins. You always feel like, oh, yeah, back in 05, you know, when, when Stu and RC and Chad, Wyndham, all those guys were riding, like, it, oh, it was, it was bigger then, you know, and it, I, I don't think the numbers support that. I agree. I, I don't think so either. And, and if, it, if it was, you know, downgrading that much since 2005, I don't think Feld would keep doing it, right? Like, they're not in the business of losing money or, or no. getting smaller, right? So I, I agree. I, I don't think it's gone down. It's, it has to have gone up and probably only up, I would imagine. Yeah, and I always think about, I mean, man, this is a really, I don't know if we want to get into this on the first <laughs> podcast here, but I always think about, like, it's crazy that there's no s- such thing as, like, a riders, like, there's no riders association or anything. Um, I think Why event- is that, though? Why is that? <clears throat> I mean, Feld is giving us a platform, for sure, but they need us. We need them. Um and right now it's, you know, you come for one, you come up and you, you have one shot. You have one shot at this. You have a couple bad years or don't show promise or whatever. It's done for you. Like, you know, if you make it here, you've pretty much sacrificed everything and you're not trying to ruffle any feathers. You're not trying to rock the boat. So it's going, change is going to come from somebody that's already established and has nothing to lose because you can't, you're not going to come in and change the landscape. You know, you, they'll just spit you out. Um, so I think it has to come from somebody with a lot of credibility that really cares about the sport and wants to see it grow and puts, puts that in front of himself. And even, I mean, I even, you know, obviously my, my main goal right now is just to get back and, and be up front more and to, you know, to win. Like I, I want that so bad. And, you can't stress about yeah, the Yeah, I'm like, I, I don't have that. time. I don't have time to be like, oh, we should do this, this, and that. And I think that most of the time that's where, you know, that's where the problem lies. You know, and we have a couple of NASCAR guys that we work with. And just being around that more, they have, I don't know what they call it, like a driver's association yeah, or something. So, uh, so they all, they're all in like a text thread, right? And they all like, you know, voice their opinions right. on, you know, this is going on this weekend. We don't really like that. And they have one guy from that group who doesn't drive anymore, he's a retired guy, and goes to NASCAR and voices those things to them right? as him. Like, So I think, like you said, if we, need to, we just need that guy that can you know, work with everyone. But I also think that a lot of the riders, for whatever reason, um, just don't want to work with anybody else. Like they, it's very, like, not selfish, but... Um, yeah, we're, we're you know, gnarly, man. We're, yeah, like, we're very tunnel vision... Get out of my way! Shut up! Do my do thing. thing. Yeah. yeah, I don't know the I don't know the correct answer, but I do know it will take somebody that's kind of transcends the sport a bit. You know, somebody that wins a lot. Um, Tomac be an example, although that guy, I don't, he, you I don't know, think he, he he never he doesn't want he doesn't you know he doesn't care. Yeah, he, yeah. he you know he's done his thing and he's um, I'm sure he'll be around a little bit, but. Um, and even like you would almost think Chad Reed would maybe be that guy, but um, I don't know. Like, is it just the other writers just don't want to get together as a group? Because like if if everybody that's definitely part it, of it. Yeah, like you have to have everybody together. Because if one person bails on it and is just gonna go do it anyways, then it ruins the whole thing. Yeah. So I don't know. I th- I do think that will happen at some point. I don't know who it's gonna be. I don't know who's gonna be the the revolutionary, but it it will happen. Um, it will happen. Just, just win. How about how about Eli last weekend? Oh, dude, God, dude, dude. I don't want to talk about it. Brutal. Jeez. Okay, okay. Your your boys with Chase though. We no. work with Chase. Yeah. Like, not the way that you want to win one by any means, by any means. But, well, I, I yeah, I like I was kidding when I said I don't want to talk about it. I mean, I, you know, I don't want to talk about it because it hurts me for him. But it's brutal. It's a good, good. It's a good point I w- I've wanted to say for a while now. I'm just going to start. This is how it works most of the time. I have a thought that pops in my head, and I just start <laughs> talking. And Sometimes it works out. Sometimes it doesn't. I think in society today, you're told, work hard, be successful. Like That's it. That's all you need. You need to bust your ass, do everything you can, and you will succeed. We have examples of that. Michael Jordan, you know, I think Wayne Gretzky, Tiger Woods. But it 
it's not always like that. It's not always like that. Anything can happen. You can do everything right. And you have something happen. Like Eli happened. I mean, he barely overshot the jump. Has that ever happened to you? Like and like where you've overextended your, you know, tendons there? I, I broke an ankle? ankle one time. I, I think something similar, similar like that, to yeah. that. Um, Yeah, I just think. And, and that's where, you know, I've been saying in my, my interviews and stuff lately how I'm trying to focus on the work itself and, you know, doing my best in that. And it's like, you don't, you don't hold the door for a, for a lady walking into a store for, for them to say, thank you. You don't do it for that. You just do it because you do do it. it. Like, that's just how you are. And that's how I try to look at work. And because it can get you in a bad place when you, when you feel like you deserve these things. Like, you know, I, I remember early in my career just asking, just saying, why? Like, why? I've been, there's nobody, nobody that's worked harder than me like the first 18 years of my life. Like, what did I do to deserve this? And it just doesn't exist, man. It just doesn't exist. And um, it's a perfect example with, with Eli last week. And you hate, like, I couldn't believe it. I was behind him. And then all of a sudden, I thought he had a flat tire or something, you know, and you... Obviously, it was an emotional night for me, but, um, you know, I got, remember, I got back to my hotel, and that's like the, kind of when the night settles down, you're like, man, like I can, especially because I've been through it, like not that specifically, but you sympathize kind of with your, with your fellow rider, and um, yeah, and then Chase, and it's like your little brother's like crushing it, it's, uh, it was a weird night, wasn't it? Dude, I, I just, uh, like you said, going back to the hotel, it's like, Holy crap! What just happened? Yeah, and yeah. What? How many factory guys do we have left? Well, AP's back this maybe weekend. Four, four maybe. Yeah, I don't know. It's insane. But like, yeah, you missed a couple of races this year. But dude, you like you made it to the end. Like, yeah, you're crushing it this year. Like, it, whether the results show that or not, like you have to leave this one feeling good about it. I knew coming into this year. I knew what I I knew what I had to do. I had to do this, Re- like regardless. I, I had I had to be here, and it's it's a huge. I, I, it means so much to me to like you. I never do anything else in the sport again, and coming from where I've come from, a, like a year ago. To now and being here, like there's, I can't explain. I I've said it a lot this year, like how I'm proud of myself. It's such an accomplishment in itself for me, you know, and I think like this past weekend, a lot of guys are out. I get a podium. I'm emotional, man. It's the journey. I know. I know there's a bunch of people hurt. A lot of like, work I get that it. podium though. A like I get it. it. I get it, but I'm here, you know, and um, there's something, there's something to that. And, um, I hate that when I say and um, <laughs> jeez Louise. See, I got, yeah, this is good. This podcast is good practice for hopefully my com- t- commentating it's career. Get you down the, out for that too. Yeah, these ums and uhs and but uhs and um, yeah, I need to work on my um. See, <laughs> got to work oh, on my transition words. But it's been it's been a heck of a year. I knew coming into this year, I I felt like I was going to take some heat. Like I felt like. I pretty much knew I was going to be in the spot that I've been, kind of back of the top 10, not not having the pace of the front group. I knew I was going to be there. You just can't. You just can't take that much time off. I mean, I, I've probably ridden Supercross over the last three years. Um, shoot, four times is, is less, like less than – than those guys and you can't you can't make that up so I knew I had to I knew I had to get in there and build and it's been challenging it's been challenging to like stick to the plan what, what did you do in your time off like what do you I mean I know like golf and whatnot but like what what did you do when you were at home just chilling last couple of years like like did you find any new hobbies like what'd you do so that's what's so hard and it's what's so hard about being injured as an athlete like you you, you hear that a lot you know and you, you see riders like you know, a lot of riders will reach out to me, like make sure I'm good. It's hard because you're so wrapped up. It for one, it's your identity as a as a person because you've been doing it since you're three, and it's it's one goal. 
Um, so you, you kind of feel like shit about yourself for one. And for two, you know, you're getting back on the bike in like four months or whatever. So you don't, all these other areas of your life that, that you would tend to, if you were just working a more normal job that doesn't require everything, it's not there. It's not there. So you're kind of restricted then on what you can. Yeah. So it's like, what do I start trying to build all these areas of my life now when I'm, when I'm still trying to be this, you can't get out of the mindset. You can't get out of that like determined mindset. And maybe there are guys, maybe there are, you know, riders that have come up and um, they have a healthy view on, on all of it. But I know for me, that's been, that's been a challenge and I've seen it with other riders as well. It's just, you know, I don't have, you know, I'm not married. Like, um, you know, I live by myself and God, it was, you know, it's hard. I feel like you go through this period of like anger where you're just bitter at the sport at first. Um, it, but really this, this past time, I just tried to go to work mentally cause I was over, I, I've been through this down period. You know, I've been through the injuries enough to where I'm like, okay, like let's, let's stop feeling sorry for ourselves. And that would only happen for a short time, but let's stop feeling sorry for ourselves and let's like figure out how we're going to live when I'm done racing. Yeah. Like what, you know, be, get to a spot where you can be. So I made it my goal to get to a spot, to be joyful, to be happy without having the career going perfect. Like I felt like if I could get to a good spot mentally when I'm at where I'm at in my sport, that's going to be huge for me down the line whenever it's done. Um, and God, it was hard. It was really hard. I, I can't even explain it all the past year, but, um, what do you do? You wait. Lots of call of duty probably. Yeah. I mean, you had to distract yourself to something. Huh? I, I couldn't imagine really, golf. Yeah. I got down to a, I think it was a seven index, seven handicap at one point, which is my best. Probably if I, man, I've played a couple of times in the past couple months, I'm swinging it like an 18 or something, but, um, yeah, those periods, man, those, it's it's so hard. I feel like it's kind of dramatized a bit in, in how we talk about it. But some of the some of the most challenging, like introspective times of my life. And when you care about something that much, you just it's amazing how much you can suffer to, to, to put up with it and to get back. And, and and all of that like suffering and heartache and whatever, that's what I you know, that's what came out on the podium last weekend. It's, it's wow. Like you stuck with it. Like you remember, like I can close my eyes. I can remember those days. Like I can remember those days where I was just telling myself one more, come on, just, just one more, just go, like, just go to the gym, just go to PT. Like you can do it one more and, um, shoot, you know, I don't care if I'm racing the KTM junior challenge, (laughs) like it's a big, it's a big deal. Podium's a podium, especially when it's been that long. I mean, it's a big deal huge deal um yeah i people that hate on you for being emotional i, I don't get it i think it's just kind of the nature well, it's of not very it's not very about. manly right like sex drugs and rock and roll and dirt bikes <laughs> and, and i get that i yeah. i totally understand that perspective and i i really try not to take i try not to take any of that personally i read this book called the four agreements and it's never take don't assume don't take anything personally because it's just really it's got nothing to do with you most of the time the way I look at myself I'm an I'm an entertainer I'm providing a service to society where I can entertain them whether they like me hate me whatever I think the biggest challenge for me is growing up in the sport I knew that I was a bit and I'm not trying to sound like condescending or you know because that's definitely not where it's coming from but I just knew I was a bit different like I knew I looked at things differently um, like I, I am just, and it's, it's, it's crazy that I'm admitting this on camera, but it's like, I'm just a deeper dude. Like I'm a deeper dude. I think about things. Like I want to get to the bottom of things. I kind of feel like that's what life's about for me. And that's not really the, the model for a dirt bike racer. That's no, no, no. We don't, you know, we don't cry. We don't talk about that. We don't do tough. this. Yeah, yeah. And so the, you know, I, I think I got to a, you know, a point too, cause in this little world, it's like, I've had eyeballs on me since I was like six years old. Like what's Adam going to do? Um, and you feel like you're trapped. You feel like 
everybody expects you to be this one person. And, you know, <clears throat> even I've seen the last few years, people are like, there's, there's resistance to me, like being myself and growing when, when, just when you're, when you're a public, like any type of public figure, you, you, people want you to be this for them, like whatever, like they want you to be this guy, like don't change. Um, and that, that, that weighed on me for a long time. And I would go through periods where like, I would try to be like more stoic and like less, just less open. But it, at the end of the day, it's just not who I am. And what's the point? Like, what's the point of all this? If I'm not, if I'm not myself, you know, I, I know I do all the right things, you know, at the end of the day, everybody's so unique and only, you know, what's best, like only, you know, inside, like what's best for you and how you can get the most out of yourself. And for me, that's just being, being myself. I wish more guys were like that. And just like going back to how the sport can grow more. I think if more guys were like that and more open, I think that would, you know, that would create a little more. It will change. Growth, It'll right? change. It's, it's going to take a generation or two, you know, all this stuff. I feel like I hate when people say, I, I dislike when people say kind of, Oh, like, look at this world we're living in. Like everything's going to shit, you know? Yeah. It's not like we're, they just look at the negatives of everything. Well, it's easy to feel that way because that's what gets the clicks. That's what, you know, you go on Twitter, you go on Instagram, like whatever. It's negativity that gets eyeballs, you know, and it's easy to focus on that. But I just think like as a, you know, going back to the, going back to the point of like being more open, I think society is evolving to the point of, you know, like kids coming up today, you know, when they're 30, 40 years old, they're going to really understand that it's not weak. Like it's not weak to like show yourself, you know, eventually that's going to be viewed to catch on to most of society to be like, that's, those are the tough guys, you know, like those yeah. are the, um, to really put yourself out there like that. You know, it's, it's hard. Like at first I, it's difficult to be yourself because you put yourself, whatever you put out there, you know, you know, you're getting negative feedback. Like, and people can judge you, like judge you to your very core. And you got to be able to, you got to be able to like hold firm with yourself. Um, and yeah, I think, I think it's all coming around and really, I think we've never been in a better spot. Where do you think Eli's at mentally right now? Like, you know, this past year he was talking about retirement, possibly star wanted to keep him going. This happens. He's sitting at home. I, I almost think that this would probably make him not want to retire even more because now he's going to feel what retirement's like and probably not like it, if I had to guess. <clears throat> I don't know. Eli's such a mystery to me. He is. We, I don't even, yeah, you were his teammate. I was his teammate, and I, I don't know him at all. I yeah, really, y'all never talked to him. I really don't know him. You know, we, we, had, we talked. I remember we played nine holes of golf one time. Um, he's a fun guy. Like, laughing. We played him with RC cars and – um, you know, we spent a lot of days at the track together, but he's just, you know, to himself and that's who he is. And I respect the shit out of anybody being who they, who they are, whether they're, whether they're open or closed, whatever, like you can tell he's authentically himself. Um, and so it's hard to know what he's thinking right now. And that's part of what's kind of made him so mysterious and also kind of one of the ways it's made him so good in the sport is that he just does his own thing. And even Shoot, even when he did his Achilles this, this past weekend, I mean, you didn't see any sign of emotion going off the track. He just, homie Dude. just went straight to the medic unit, and he's like, yeah, my Achilles. Like, that's, you know, that's, those are the optics. Is like, hey, guys, I, I messed something up, you know, and it wasn't any way on it. You know, I'd have probably go throw my bike or something. Dude, you hear about how, like, gnarly those injuries are in Achilles tear or whatever, like, that. Yeah, yeah he, it's not like good. You, you, like, don't face, have control of your foot, face. basically. Um, he's an animal. He's an animal. Yeah. I mean, I hope, I hope he comes back because I don't think, uh, I, you know, I just don't want him to go out that way, but if he's satisfied with it, I think he's the type of guy that can be like, you know what? It was a great season. Like it was a great season. Something freak sure. happened and it is what it is. You know, I, I'm not going to be greedy and, um, it's a good time to wrap this thing up, you know, and I don't want to take those risks anymore. You know, he's got yeah. a, I think he's got a couple of kids now and Things family, like three maybe, yeah, yeah, two or three. Got a family, and you know he could be the guy that's like, I've done enough, you know. And I think, 
I don't think it's going to taint his career at all. No. I don't think people are going to – people are going to remember that he was on fire this year. Um, and shit happens. Shit always will happen. Where, where do you think he fits in in, like, the, the big picture of, like, the all-time greats? I mean, I, I know, like, numbers-wise, he's second behind McGrath now in Supercross. But, like, you as, like, a fan of the sport, where do you fit him in overall in the big picture? That's really hard. That's really hard. I mean, shoot, I want to be – transparent on this podcast and just cut it up but it's hard to really rank guys like that one one thing i think is crazy is that this this era that we're in right now is like the era of no dominant guy like anybody can win and eh, it's kind of been a lot of eli like the past you know this generation has been eli's pretty much obviously cooper's done really well too it's kind of like a face and you know a face in there. Somebody when you think of Eli, you think of Cooper and his success. But like he has kind of quietly, I feel like when he wasn't getting the Supercross championships done in like seventeen and eighteen and nineteen, we he kind of like from a public standpoint, people didn't view him as like an all time great. And yeah. it's amazing how fast it can change. And with just some, something so small, like, obviously he won on Cowie, but, like, switching over to Yamaha, no one really thought that it was going to, like, you know, go that quickly. It was pretty impressive how just that, that little change made that big of a difference for him. Yeah, maybe he just had to, maybe he just had to leave me. Yeah, maybe, maybe I just maybe my, my vibe, but Maybe my vibe sucked. <laughs> no, but, man, I, I hope he comes back. I hope he comes back. You know he'll be competitive if he does. I, I don't know what the time frame is on an Achilles, though. <clears throat> I've heard anywhere from, like, four months to a year. I don't know. I mean, I, like, riding a dirt bike is obviously a lot different and probably a lot worse on your body than most other sports. So I I don't know, man. I mean, Might have to ride, ride on the heel of his boot, not the toe. Yeah, seriously. Rhino will be pissed. Yeah, I mean, I, like, everybody's taught to ride on the balls of their, their feet, like, does that change with something like this, or is it just a freak no, deal? No, it's just it's a freak, freak deal. deal. It's a freak deal. And the guy's like a physical freak of nature, too. I feel like that's maybe not talked about enough. I mean, when's the last time you've seen him get tired? I don't think it's ever happened. No, he doesn't. The guy's got more red blood cells than half the field combined. Just living it. I think he lives at 9,000 and <laughs> rides at 7,400 feet. Dude, he really doesn't make mistakes, either. Like, he's not a big mistake guy. As of late, like, this year, I feel like he's had some weird ones. And you know what I, I always think? with him too and, and what I always really admire and respect and, and this one kind of I can relate to in a way like we always we've talked about Eli and those weird rides that he has like Indianapolis this year you know I think he got eighth and he just looked like he was just kind of nothing really wrong but just kind of not going as fast I mean I beat him so you know <laughs> <laughs> at that point you know at this point um in the season when I was where I was at big deal for me man i beat eli tomac but i think when he doesn't when he doesn't feel comfortable on the bike whether it's a i think most of the time it's it probably has to do with the setting like he just misses the setup and he feels like he's taking too much risk to like have that much like to be that sure yourself and like that calm to be like you know i'm just not it's just not gonna happen tonight like i don't care i don't care what any of you fuckers think no, like I'm gonna I'm gonna do me and then I'll see you next week. Like I I people have always been dumbfounded by that, but I think it's crazy smart and part of the reason why he's been so durable because I know my ass what I would do. I'd just shift up and pin it. Not now. No, not now. no, no. no, no. Years ago, we, we've we've ago, we've yes. learned, but um, I respect that a lot about him. You know, he's he's brought a lot to the sport. Yeah, I think it just takes time to learn that, and that that kind of brings me to the next thing I wanted to ask you about. Um, 250 champion jet lawrence like do you see him having let's say the same issues that you and chase had in the first years of 450 where you know you're really fast but you're crashing you're kind of getting used to it do you see that happening to him or do you see him just right off the rip just joining the winner's there, well there's one thing about getting going from a 250 and getting on a 450 right away it's almost easier the first year why is that and it, it's really difficult it's really difficult to explain um, but just 
man, I feel like, like for me, my first year, I feel like I gave the four fifty. and this is going to sound crazy because I was like fast as called, like <laughs> whatever, Cindy or whatever you want to say, but I gave it more respect. Like my throttle control was a little better. Um, and it's just fresh and new and kind of all the advantages of a 450 are so um, apparent to you. You know, I remember, I remember riding a 250F. I remember riding a 250F for the first time at Ryan Villapoto's place in 2011. I was riding 80s and Super Minis at the time. I remember going through a flat, sandy corner. Flat sand is like the slickest, most unforgiving. Like, you don't know what the back end's going to do. I remember getting on a 250 and just drifting the thing around like a 180-degree corner and on flat sand and thinking to myself, like, oh, my God. Like, I can, <laughs> I can do anything on this bike. It's got so much traction or whatever. And fast forward a few years, I didn't feel like that. Like, I just didn't, it, you know, it just doesn't, it's just something about getting used to it, right? Like so that new car feel. Yeah. It's almost like, kind of felt like I had a bit of a, but besides injuries, whatever, I felt like I had a bit of like a sophomore slump. Like, where I kind of, I don't know, maybe I was just trying hard in the wrong areas or whatever. But I, I think for Jet, I mean, he's shown that he's, he, he does have his, he had that triple, you know, he's had that triple crown thing a little bit where he's done some stuff. Um, but man, he rides so he lets it come to him. I mean, you can tell whoever it, I'm assuming it's his dad, whoever's in his ear knows what they're talking about. And you know, he's got Johnny O, which is, you know, that guy's crazy smart and really knows what he's talking about there. And I think he's got all the tools to be successful right away. I, I, I can't see him not winning three times this summer. You know, I, I don't know, maybe, maybe more, maybe less. But, um, yeah, I mean, the, the talent's apparent. I mean, four, not a lot of people win. What, what's the stat? So he's got four little bike championships now, and that's... Two indoors, two outdoors. That's, that's RC. He's, uh, tied, he's tied with James, right? So James won in 2002 motocross, 2003 supercross, 2004 supercross, 2004 outdoor, so four. He would have had that. Um, remember, he he missed the first three nationals of '03 because he got knocked out at the the East West shootout, but he still was pretty close. That's insane. I mean, that's a it's an insane stat because you know you have guys that'll come into a 250 class for two years and bounce, or you have guys that stay for eight years. But that's a pretty Jet, that's a pretty yeah. stat, impressive stat. Jet just got a good racing mind. You can just tell he re, he reminds me a bit of of Cooper. Where you, you just he just makes the right decisions like most of the time and, and gets the most out of whatever he has that night. I think it might be a bit frustrating for him sometimes when he's not feeling it. Like this year, he was pretty vocal after Seattle of like he won, but he didn't ride that you know, he didn't ride that well. In the four fifty class, you can't not ride you can't feel bad about your riding and win. It just doesn't happen. You win a race or even get on the podium and most of the guys, maybe guys that are up there, I don't know. Most of the guys will tell you, like, I was ripping. That was that was good. You know, and I think sometimes that's, you know, he can maybe force the issue sometimes there when he's a little off, when he feels like he should be up there. But I feel like he's got all the tools. I feel like he's got all the guys around him um, to do the job. And he's a good kid. He, he's, he's very, I think, he's very, like, it's like he doesn't even know. He, he kind of walks around like, he doesn't even know he's that good or he doesn't, he doesn't really know eyes are on him or he's yeah. like, he, at least he plays it off. Well, no, I, it's not a play. It's really not a play. You think it's just how he is. No, it's, I think, I think it genuinely is just how he is. And I think it's going to serve him really well. Do you think that, you know, they obviously do a lot of outside the box things right now, as far as like, you know, the way they are pitching jet to whoever, right. The audience. Do you think that that's going to weigh on him? when he goes to the 450 class? Because it's, it's only going to get magnified, right? Like, to, you know, way more. Because, like, you, you run out of time eventually to do these extra things, right? You need to focus on writing, or they say you do. Like, do you think that becomes a problem as he gets older into the 450 class? So one thing that I can say from personal experience is, like, growing up, I didn't ever – I never really thought about anything. I never really – everything was just right in front of me. You're always just thinking right in front of you, like whatever race it is or, and I remember I, I, you know, I turned 25 and I was like, man, I really don't have many friends. Like I really don't, like I don't, 
<laughs> and, and not, I'm, you know, I have a few really, you know, I have a lot of really cool people around me. Um, but it's just, you're not, these other aspects of your life, you're not, like, you're not able to focus on. So you don't have this, like, well-rounded lifestyle. So I felt like I kind of had to relearn. Like, I felt like I had to start start opening up my horizons a little bit and, and, and start being a little bit less. Like, five years ago, I would never be sitting in this hotel room, you know, starting a podcast um, the day before the, the last Supercross race. Like, I would be in bed right now, you know, with the lights <laughs> off and meditating or something, you know. And I, I've just it's better for me now. Like I perform better, like less stress. And, and I feel like, I feel like that will happen for jet at one point where you kind of have to re you kind of have to learn how to do it again. Like as an adult, almost, I, I don't know if that I'm having a bit of a time trying to articulate that, but I think, um, yeah, I think just once, yeah, just stuff starts to get more complicated. Really. That's it. It's going to be interesting. Uh, I'm excited to see. He'll what do he it, man. Do. He'll do it. He's going to he's gonna do really well. What do we have going on the next couple of weeks? We got we got a weekend off, then Paula. What do you got going on? Well, I tried to get the boys together for like a golf trip to Palm Springs, like a little three-dayer. Who, who are you taking? Who are you taking with you? Well, I'm not because oh. everybody everybody's busy. My buddy Nate is graduating college, and my Shout buddy – my Nate. Yeah, right. My buddy Derek is going to his graduation – um, I hit up Chris Betts. Uh, I think I'm still waiting to hear back there. And I actually, I just bought a house. Um, I've, I've been living, I've been living like a monk now for a couple of years. I had this little, little apartment basically. And, um, yeah, so I, I've, I've bought a house now. You're full-time California. Like, yeah, I'm full-time. No Cal going back to yeah. Florida or what's the. So I think I plan to go back to California when, when I, or shoot, when I, I think I plan to go back to Florida when I have when I have a family like to, to be close to my family and stuff like that but for, for now for the kind of for my racing and the end of that and then transition to what's next I think it's smart for me to be in California um, yeah so people ask me that all the time that they still I've been I haven't been in Florida in like two years man and everybody's still like, Where you like I'll see you in Claremont <laughs> yeah um so yeah, that's gonna be my next couple of weeks getting all moved in and stuff. The walls are painted all weird. It's a bit of a fixer upper, so I'm gonna do some some renovations myself, which should be should be interesting. We but might, we might need a video of that. Yeah, that's one thing I wanted. You know, in the time I've had off from injury and stuff, I, I've tried to like be better with working with my hands and and doing like I always try to learn some type of new skill. So. Yeah, it'll be interesting. And I think um, I haven't ridden outdoors much. Like this week, I did the stem cell thing, which we haven't talked about. We'll talk about. And I didn't ride like at all. Um, so I need to get an out, a good outdoor setting. I need to get, I have like three 30 plus twos under my belt, I think. So I need to get some more motos under my belt, get ready for that. It all happened so fast, you know. Dude, I feel like we were just at Anaheim like last week. I feel like this whole season has just flown by. Yeah, and I feel like, my career has been like that because you're always living to the next race. And I think it's the same thing for everybody. It's weird. And this year I've really tried to hack that. Like I've really tried to embrace it more, enjoy it more. Um, but yeah, it does, does go by fast. So what are you doing the next couple of weeks? You're coming to California, coming to California the week of Paula get there early. Cause there's a Thursday press conference. Uh, but I think I might, I think I'm going to go to a NASCAR next weekend. We playing blackjack. No, no. You're out? I'm not, I, I would love to. I need to, like, learn it, though. I need to watch some YouTube videos. I before. got you. You're pretty good at it? Can you win us some money, at least? I mean, I th I, the only thing I know about blackjack, for sure, is that you have to do this. You have to do the same thing every time. So you got to take as many variables out of it as you can. So do you like, stay at the casino, usually? Um, No, I stay at the I stay at the house, which oh, okay. is, like, yeah. 20 minutes yeah, away. Close. But, yeah, I, I never hit on 16. I try to get the dealer to uh, bust. How much money are you, like, you go into a casino, how much money are you allocating yourself? 300 bucks, and I play at the $10 table, man. So that's, that's it. it. No going over through. No, no, no. Uh, there was one time, with Ken, Ken and I like to go to the casino. Like, sometimes we rode the Harleys down there one time. Um, when I was living in Florida, we went down to Tampa and, and did that. It's fun. I, I really don't, I'm super tight with money. I really don't like, um, most of the time, it's not worth the fun, like the two hours of fun. If I lose a few hundred bucks, Too I'm risky. like, come on, man. Come on. What are you doing? 
Well, um, what's the most you've won though? Like twenty two hundred. Because I I had a crazy run at blackjack, and then I put everything on. I put everything on black and doubled it. It was a good day. We're gonna have to go. We'll, we'll report back to the fans, but we're gonna have to go play some blackjack then. Absolutely. I thought you were wrapping up this podcast. Man. No, no, no. We're still going. Should we talk about the stem cells yeah, yeah. now? Oh. You saw that video. I don't even want to think about it. I have a weak stomach when it comes to that stuff. I don't like needles. You don't like needles, but yes, please tell tell us what the stem cell therapy was. So, I mean, little backstory here, and it's been briefly talked about sporadically the last four years. I've had something wrong with my hand since September of 2019. I woke up one morning and it was just like this. I have no idea what happened. Um, I've had a lot of procedures. Um, I've had nerve, nerve conduction studies, EMGs. I've flown all around the world to try to get this, looked at my neck, everything. Like I, I'm pretty versed with everything that goes on with, you know, with nerves, all this stuff. And um, so this is a, this is a good, like stem cells. I've done a lot of research on stem cells and they're obviously starting to become more popular in the States. Most of the time, previously people would go out of the country for it. Um, it's basically like your body creates stem cells. So yeah, so they went in the, the, like I, when I saw the video, I was, I was freaked out, but I didn't have you watched the video before you went there. No. Oh, so okay, oh, I don't think I would have gone. I was going to say, I don't think I would have. Yeah. So I went to uh, this place called. I flew from Denver to Kansas. Then Monday morning, we did this thing. Um, lie flat on a table. Like, you're getting a massage, basically. Look down. And then they needle you up, light a cane. How, hold on. Show the, show the viewers how long the needle was. Oh, yeah. This is about, I mean, shoot, for the, for those just listening, um, I mean, it, it feels like it's as big as my forearm. You know, as long no, as my, like, from my, from the end of my hand to my elbow. Um. So, yeah, you're lying flat. They didn't give me any type of, like, nothing for pain or anything like that. And because I'm a bit of a skinnier dude, I guess it's harder to, to get these stem cells out. So, yeah, it feels like they're drilling into you with a needle. For So I got some to put in that day, and then I, I banked some, which means it's gonna they're going to be, like, cryogenically frozen to where I can kind of use them at any time. I can just fly back and they can inject them without having to go through that process again. I guess it'll last me like 30 years. Thankfully. Yeah, for real. Um, so it's comforting that you only have to do it one time, but, uh, yeah. So they, they do whatever they have to do. I, I really, I don't want to get into it. They do a lot of, they, like they harvest the stem cells, they call it. And then, yeah, they injected it into my, because we don't know exactly where the problem is. Um, they injected it into my shoulder um, my elbow and my wrist. So yeah, it was typically with stem cells, you want to take like a month off afterwards because the more active you are, the, the less the stem cells help. Um, but that's why I banked them because I'm going to go back at the end of the season when I ha can have a couple weeks off, even Do though more. our off season is like three weeks long. <laughs> I'll, um, yeah, I'll get them in there, but I'm hoping, I'm hoping this has some, has some, um, positive effects. It's been, it's been difficult because I don't ever, I think it's it's nerve related and it's difficult because I don't really know what I'm going to get on any given day. Sometimes I feel like it doesn't affect me that much. And then sometimes it's, it's pretty bad. Like sometimes I can't really do all my motos or I can't go through the whoops or, um, so learning to be okay with my best, even though it's not always great has been, has been difficult. Um, but yeah, I think I can still, I've learned to ride the bike a bit differently and it's not like I have no strength at all. So I still believe that once I get back up to speed and kind of just get more races under my belt, even with the problem, I still feel that I'm one of the guys. I still I feel like I'm one of the guys with one and a half arms, and, and I can do that. It is pretty insane. I mean, obviously the field's a little thin right now, but even before, like you were still considering the issues that you've had, like you're still riding very good and right in the thick of it. I mean... It's got to be a good feeling for you because you're like, oh, well, once this is, you know, fixed or, or better to some extent, you know, the possibilities are endless. I mean, I think you can get back to where you were before, I, I think. Yeah, yeah. It's just been – this thing has just been so challenging. Even – it just – you know, it's been four years now, and it's just the fact that I can't walk in somewhere and somebody can tell me what it is. Right there. It's just, yeah. you know, it's – it's um 
Not it's sure. a bummer, but it, I've, I've kind of overcome it in my head now where I don't, I don't really talk about it. Like I talked about it a lot, like the first couple of years, even, you know, at the test track and I'll come off warm up and to Nick and to my crew chief, Oscar mechanic, whatever. I'm like, Oh, my hands this today, this year. I'm just like, I don't say anything. Like, Probably better that yeah, way. and I said at the beginning of the year too, like where we go and do the media day, uh, kind of behind the scenes off camera. I'm like, I really don't want you guys to talk about it this year. We, we've heard about it enough. It is what it is. Um, so yeah, it, it's something that has been challenging for me, but <laughs> in a way, I'm glad in a way it's crazy to say, but what, what this is to, like, what it's taught me and man, it's, it's hard to it's hard to explain, but to get to a place where I can be good with myself and be good with my best, even when it's really not, you know, what you feel like you could do. I mean, think about it. You work your whole life to get to this opportunity right here. Factory Kawasaki 450, world at your fingertips. Here's your opportunity. Go get it. Okay, now go get it with one and a half arms. <laughs> you're d- you're know, doing it's, it. It's, I mean, you're, you're uh, doing yeah, it I'm, I'm doing, yeah, I'm. I'm trying to outsmart it. Uh, yeah, that was the stem. That's what the stem cells were about. So, I'm excited uh, to see how that like ends up playing out in the next couple of months. Like, if, if you can actually feel a difference. So, nor- normally, I normally they told me people feel the most difference between six and nine months, but it's happened sooner. It's happened later. Um, but there's been a lot of like st- pretty good studies on it, and a lot of the people there. There's like some crazy stories of of guys getting good results. So I feel like that's going to be me. I'm, I'm positive about it. Yeah, I, th- I think it'll be good. Uh, but, man, I'm glad I don't have to get that needle again. Jeez. Uh, maybe I'll post. I don't know if I have permission to post that video, but. Well, they're, they're going to post something. They're going to post something, I think. Oh, yeah. In a, in a little bit, probably in a couple months or so. But uh, So yeah. backstory, guys. Shane, Shane and his company run my social media because I've been pretty lame lately. I, I wouldn't say lame. It's just you've been more reserved. Yeah, I just normal. I look back at I look back like five years ago. And I'm like, man, I was funny. What happened, dude? I I was in the crowd when you won your very first Supercross race in Dallas, Arlington. God, it is crazy. Wasn't it crazy dude. that that's nine years ago? I know it feels like forever ago. I was in high school. I was in high school. No then. way. Yeah, um, yeah. I, mean, I I don't think you've changed that much though. Like from a from a funny social standpoint, I feel like from then to now. You're still funny. You just kind of think things through a little more when you post it. Yeah, I mean, I think I've kind of, I've always been kind of mindful of the narrative surrounding me. I'm a pretty self-aware guy, and I, I know how I've, I know how I come across to people, and the fact that I am kind of open, the fact that I am different in a sense of I like to do goofy. Like I'm just, I'm a bit goofy, man. Like I like to do some funny stuff and. Um, when you get around Joe specifically, yeah, dude, Joe, he's <laughs> awesome, man. Shout out Joe Shimoda. Um, so I, that's been a lot in my career. I I've, ba- I've struggled with that a bit. It like trying to be myself, like in feeling bad about being myself because it's like, oh, I'm not serious. I don't care. Or, you know, you're soft or, or this or that or whatever. And, you know, society has all these narratives they, they put on things. And I feel like there's been this resistance to, to kind of being, being myself. And that's where, and yeah, I think, I I think I, I think I just like the attention a lot too, growing up. I mean, I've always had it. it I've always had it, the attention. And I like playing into that. I like the glory. I like the, the ego boost and all that growing up, you know, and I think I've got to a point now where, I can kind of take it or leave it. Like I'm super unbelievably grateful for, for all the support and everything, but I I don't feel like I, I don't feel like I need to prove anything to anybody. Like, Oh, look at me. Look at how awesome I am. Look at how hard I'm working or this or that. Like I know me, I know what I'm doing. And I think that's where the, maybe that's where the social thing comes from. I don't, I don't know. We're going to, I think we're going to have more fun with it this summer. You think? I think so. I think we're going to get you, uh, the vibe is going to be very high this summer. The results are going to be good. Um, the stem cells are going to work really well. I think it's going to be good. I'm excited, man. This year has been, it's been challenging. And, and I look back and throw a blanket over my whole career. It's, yes, it's been challenging. So good when it's good. So shit when it's shit. But what a, what a ride. Like, what a ride it's been. And I get to do this. Guys like you, my friends, every weekend. It's awesome. The fact that anybody's even listening to this right now, 
Like if they've made it this far, if, they yeah, made, if it they've far. made it this far, I think, um, yeah, what, the, well, how much time are we at? We're at 54 minutes right now. Is that okay? I mean, that's, that's normal. I feel like, yeah, yeah. I, I think we need to keep it between 30 and an hour. Yeah. Uh, maybe we'll have a guest on next time, but, um, yeah, should we wrap this thing up? I think. Yeah. Yeah. Good first conversation here in uh, Salt Lake City hotel room. It's the first one. Could be the first of many. Could be huge. We could have sponsors. Dude, maybe we'll get Skechers. We could have hey, sponsors. That would make that would make your life complete if my, something was. My Skechers. agent said that he was working on a Skechers deal for me. I I shit you not, Steve. So, we're ready for it. Yeah, we're ready for it. So, I appreciate you guys listening to what I have to say. It's like I said. It's going to take me a while to. It might take me a few podcasts to kind of get our niche and uh, what I want to talk about, what I want to do. But, yeah, I feel like we have a lot to offer. Love talking, love talking to you guys, informing you guys. I appreciate you. I love you. Have a great day.